All right, guys, let's go over the whiteboards. So if you're in front of the whiteboards, do me a favor, uh, don't write on the board. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, use a Sharpie or something and actually write the terminal numbers for the, for the relay and then put normally open, normally closed to stop people from writing on here. Um, so first thing is don't write on the boards. I'll go around and label everything for you. Um, second thing is once the, room, the power in the room is on, turn this guy on, make sure that you have uh, 12 volts. So you can see here that there's 12 volts available here. So it's 120 to 12 volts available. So we'll put it on DC voltage. Let's see if I can have that guy sit there. Beauty. And I want to test for voltage. And like a donkey, I have it set on the wrong setting. So let me put it on to AC. And there's my 14 and a half volts. So it's not actually 12 volts, it's 14 and a half. Let me show you that again. Remember that on the secondary of, of the transformer, it always has a higher open, like open circuit voltage than it does once we actually hook up some relays and lights. So as we put in the loads of the relay coils or the lights, we're gonna see that voltage drop down. So make sure that you are on the appropriate meter setting, uh, voltage AC, and you're not gonna see 12 volts, you're gonna see something like uh, 14 and a half volts. Once we start putting in the loads, then you'll see that voltage start to drop. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test out all the different uh, components. So we'll test out the lights, regardless if it's an LED or whether it is a incandescent, should ring out for you. So all lights are good. Uh, these guys right here, looks like somebody thinks they're normally closed, which they are in fact. When I hit the push button, the meter should stop beeping at me. So that one's good, normally closed. Change of state when I press it, and normally closed when I hit the push button, it changes state. All those guys are momentary when I let go of the push button, then it reverts back to its rest state. Beauty. So all these guys are normally closed, which means that these guys are most likely normally open. So nothing, when I press the push button, then I should have continuity. Looks good, it's not ringing out continuously, but I do have continuity there. Okay, nothing, and continuity, and Let's see if this one's momentary or maintained. So this was a, a momentary switch as well. Let it let her go, then it reverts back to its rest state. Beautiful, so we got normally closed here, and the yellows on this board are all normally open. Okay, this switch should have two positions. So in this position, she's open, and if I, to the other position, then it closes. So open, close, that one is working properly, and close position, and open. Look good. So remember that on the back of these uh, terminals, they're just soldered to wires uh, that go to the, like the actual terminals on this guy are soldered to these guys here. So every, every once in a while, the terminals come loose or the solder uh, gives out at the back. So just make sure you test all the components. Nothing more frustrating than wiring something up and having a faulty component from the beginning. Okay. Um, if I'm taking a look at this guy, then I know that two and seven, so the wiring on this guy goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So two and seven should be my coil. So I've got an open there, which is interesting. So I have an open uh, on that guy. Let me check to see on the ohmic setting whether I still have an open. So it looks like there's an issue on that, uh, on that coil. Maybe she's smoking a pancake. Um, usually we, uh, we weld these guys down in that we're making sure that these ones, these are 12 volt relays, that they're not used on the 120 volt uh, controls. So it could be that this guy is put in um, upside down. Let's see. Yes, so that guy was placed upside down. So I now have continuity between two and seven. So be careful on these guys. We'll try to, we have like a bar that we put across these, these guys, but the center tab was removed or broken and it's jammed in there. So making sure that that lines up the little tab there, then now we should have continuity between two and seven. All the other stations have a piece of metal across here, so you can't take the one, this 12 volt out and use it in the 120. Okay? Looks good. Seems to have an open again. Could be just an issue with the uh, with this particular relay. If you have an issue, then go and see your uh, instructor, and then yeah, that relay is not Let's look at CR2. So CR2 should have, come on buddy, should have continuity between two and seven, which it does, okay? Uh, then I should have continuity between one and four, 
Beauty, and then eight and five. Okay, it looks good. Okay, again, two and seven is the coil. Looks good. I've got continuity there at 17 ohms. If I go to continuity, super frustrating. Two and seven. One and four is normally closed, and eight and five. Okay, beautiful. Okay, if you wanted to, you could always take voltage. Uh, so you could, from a switch, go to two and seven, and then see whether those contacts actually change state. So we've seen here that I need to replace uh, that relay. So let me do that, and then I'll come back to you because I'm going to do the sequence of events. Okay, so drilled at the center. Actually, harder to get out than I thought. Um, so the relay is in. Two and seven is good. Let's go for continuity. Beautiful. Two and seven is good. Uh, one and four, and eight and five. Beautiful. Okay. Let's throw this bad boy. I stole this from the station. Okay, we're good to go. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the sequence of events, guys. Uh, so you can start off by uh, feeding the uh, normally closed, right? So we're going to go to the the stop contact. So we can use any one of these guys for the normally closed stop. So I'm just going to go into the feed. I'm going to use this black as my feed here. And this one's loose. Some of the nuts on the back need to be tightened up. And so trying to keep your wiring somewhat neat. I'm going to feed the, uh, the left hand side of the normally closed stop switch. So whatever you have on the diagram, like you're coming in on the left on, the, on your ladder diagram, come in to the left on the actual component. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to go from my normally closed to my normally open. So I'm going to go from the right hand side of my normally closed and I'm going to feed the right hand, left hand side of my normally open. So that's going to be my first normally open start switch. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to feed uh, terminal number two on my first relay that I had so many issues with. So I'm going to go from the other side of my normally open contact. That guy is going to feed the number two. Okay, so within reason, trying to keep your wiring pretty neat. Okay, I could not get chose one that is too short. So, trying to save the world and use um, a recycled conductor. Let's try this bad boy. Beauty coming over. And I got a feed number two, right? I'm going to feed number two, and then I got some excess wire here. I'm just going to leave that in the trough here. Beautiful. Saving the world one wire at a time. Okay, feeding. So I'm feeding number, uh, number two, and then I need a return. So I'm going to use a white as the return. And I'm just slowly building up my, uh, my circuit, right? So, so far what I've got is a two-wire control. I don't have the holding contact or anything yet. I need to bring my return over there. Two seconds. Again, you got two options here. Um, you can bend like this and loop it around the unit, or each terminal you should have a uh, little slot in there and you can cut it shorter and just fit it into the slot. Hopefully this is going to be long enough to make it back to the source of us just bite. Okay, so kind of my two wire, I've got uh, normally closed, going to normally open, no holding contact yet. I'm feeding two and seven, and if I turn this guy on, nothing turns on uh, until I hit the normally, normally open. We should hear the relay change state. Ever so slightly, you can hear that relay changing state. And if I hit the normally closed, it should de-energize that coil. Beautiful. So energize and de-energize. Beautiful. Okay. Now I need my holding contact. So I'm going to go across. I'm not going to mess around. I'm just going to 
have another conductor here. I need to go across uh, one and three, my holding contact. And those guys are gonna go in parallel with my initiating uh, unit right here. Go across the left-hand side of my normally open contact. And we're trying to keep it so that there's only two terminals two wires, sorry, under each terminal there. Uh, taking care to see whether you've actually grabbed onto the copper or whether you have, um, in fact, just tied onto the insulation. So carefully you're not tying into the insulation. We've got to go over to number one. A little bit longer there. And once you've patiently watched me slowly wire up this bad boy, then we'll grab a meter and we'll go through the voltages in this three wire circuit. And then I have the, the choice of either going all the way back to that normally open uh, contact. So I could come back from terminal number three all the way over to here, uh, or I could just jump her from three to two. Um, so I'm just gonna jump her from three to two. The issue with that is that once I throw in a light in parallel, then most likely I'm gonna have three terminals on the same, uh, three wires on the same terminal there. And so I'm going to jump her from two to three, which is essentially the same as going from three back to this bad boy right here. Okay, depending on your shop teacher, they will say my wiring is atrocious or not. Or tough. Okay, so now when we turn this guy on, then we should have uh, normally open turning on the relay keeping it on, right on, and then when I hit the normally closed, it should de-energize that unit. So turning on and turning off, you can't hear that, but it is making and breaking there. And then the last thing we were gonna do is we were putting uh, one of the lights uh, in parallel with those, uh, with the coil, with two and seven there, right? So again, you guys have a better way to do this, tell me, because I've now gotten to the point where I had uh, three wires on one trim. It's not very nice. If you get three wires, then it's hard to get the binding post to actually sit on all three. And then we need a return, right? So we use our white as a return. And so we can tie uh, whatever you want. You can tie this up to there or from there over to your seven, whatever you wish. And again, we said in class there's like three or four ways to do each one of these guys. But once you have your, your ladder diagram done and it kind of makes sense on paper, then the wiring should be able to uh, fly through. So let's turn this guy on. Let's see whether everything works. We've got the normally open that turns on our relay and should turn on the light. Beautiful. Hit the normally closed and she turns it off. Beautiful. If I hit the normally closed and hit the normally open, no current gets through the circuit. And initiating again, turns on my red and I hit the stop to turn off. Beautiful. Okay, so now let's check out uh, voltages. So we're going to watch the voltage dance around the circuit now. So again, onto uh, AC voltage here. Let's see if I can. Um, I'm going to hang this here. So hopefully you guys can see it. Let me just make sure you can see that voltage there. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it. Okay, so source voltage is 14 and a half. So that should drop once we uh, turn on the coil and the light there. So where's the voltage in the circuit? If we go across the, the source, again, we have 14 and a half. If I go across the normally closed contact, I don't have anything because right now it's normally closed. It says basically four millivolts, right? So that is essentially just a piece of wire. If I change the state of that normally closed, then nothing happens. I still have uh, a very small voltage. Looks like I got like four volts uh, there. So nothing's happening on the normally closed. All the voltage is right now across the normally open. So my 14 and a half volts is across the normally open. And if I go across two and seven, then I shouldn't have any voltage either. I got four millivolts as well. So the voltage for the source is sitting across the initiating contact right here. Once I press that push button, then the relay will turn on and the light will turn on. 
and this voltage will disappear. So I have 14 and a half volts right here. And at that point, it drops down and I got 99 millivolts across that unit. So a little bit of resistance on the actual uh, contact, but essentially no voltage. The voltage should have transferred to the two loads. Across the coil, I should see voltage, and across the light, I should see, see voltage as well. So across two and seven, I now see 13.7. So remember, we had 14 and a half to start. We now have a load, and so the internal resistance of the secondary of the transformer is now reducing my output voltage. Essentially, once I keep adding more and more uh, loads, I'm gonna get closer and closer to the 12 volts on the secondary. So, voltage is across my coil, 13.68, and I should have an identical voltage across the red light right here, 13.6. Beautiful, okay? Once I hit the normally closed, then the voltage will then revert back to the normally open push button. So right now I have 98 millivolts. When I hit the stop, my 14 and a half should drop back to my normally open switch. So now we have 14 and a half volts there. Beautiful, okay? No voltage at any point across my normally closed here. Voltage is sitting across the normally open. Once I initiate the circuit, then the voltage transfers to the loads and we're seeing a voltage drop because now the secondary of the transformer has some internal resistance and reduces the voltage down to 13.6 from 14 and a half. Beautiful, okay? So I would build up your circuit uh, like that in that we're doing the sequence of events, right? So one push button turns on one relay, that relay then allows the second relay to turn on. Uh, but we're, we're seeing initially that the components were working this one was messed up, so we had to uh, fix that. Then we built up the beginning part where we have a three wire, normally closed, stop, normally open, start, holding contacts, controlling that one relay. And now we've seen the voltage transfer across the, uh, the loads there. Beautiful, now we're good to go for the next part uh, where we have this relay control, the next, uh, the next relay for the se sequence of events. Okay, so my wiring is not going to win any prizes or ribbons at the fair. Um, but I think I got her going. I did have an issue actually with the feed. I couldn't figure out why my second relay wasn't turning on. Um, and it was, uh, it was just the fact that it wasn't making good contact on, uh, on this terminal right here. So I actually moved it down to uh, the normally closed for the feed and then everything seemed to work. So uh, the sequence of this guy is that we hit the first push button and it turns on the first relay. Hits the second push button, turns on the third relay. And then when we hit the third push button, it should turn on the third relay, which it does. But if you have this issue where you let go of the push button and then, oh, you're so close, right? Like just won't stay on. Uh, it's most likely just one wire, right? So just slowly exhale, right? Take a look at, uh, at your stuff and see if something has come loose, right? If I don't have the the relay seems to be energized, so three seems to be energized, there's a little LED here. The light is turning on at the same time, so that's all good. It's just my holding contact that's not working yet. So uh, at that point, I look over here and I'm like, oh, I got a loose wire, something came loose here. So the jumper between two and three was lost, and now I yield, so I'm good to go. Okay, so it's always one wire. Um, that has come loose or just like from feed or something like that. You can use voltage in order to troubleshoot everything, but visually looking as well for loose stuff um, helps as well. If I hit the reset, then should turn on, turn off everything, except for that really. Okay, so it might not just be the one wire, right? You might get to a certain point and you're like, I got this, and then all of a sudden your instructor comes over, like you run through everything and you're like, Beauty, I know exactly what I'm doing. Everything's cool, the instructor comes by and they're like, dude, it doesn't work. Like that last part doesn't work, the green's still on there. So let's see if I got it right now. So if we hit the normally closed, nothing happens. If I hit the third push button, nothing turns on. If I hit the second push button, nothing turns on because it's a sequence of events. The first one has to turn on before the next subsequent relays will be able to turn on. So now one's on with the indicator light uh, and it can't turn on the third one until I turn on the second relay and an indicator light for that guy as well. Now I can turn on the third relay and then hopefully if I hit the stop then everything 
turns off. Beautiful. Okay, let's take a look at uh, voltages now. So everything's working, but let's try and learn as much as we can from each of the different uh, stations. So again, the voltage is available right here, right? I got 14 and a half, 14.6 volts available. Okay, that voltage is sitting across my first normally open contact. Okay, and I don't have any voltage across the other two normally opens, right? I have to wait until this one energizes the first relay. So this voltage of 14 and a half volts will then disappear from here and go across my coils. So I put a coil, a singular. So now I got 13.7 and I got the identical voltage across this bad boy over here, 13.67. Beauty, okay? Now let's see the voltage across the second push button. Now I got 13.8. So now I got the same voltage as here across my second push button. When I hit that second push button, that voltage should transfer over to CR2. So now I have 64 millivolts. And now the voltage is transferred over here. And we should see the voltage starting to drop. Now I'm at 13 volts. And 13 volts across my second indicator lights. And most likely I have 13 volts across this guy and 13 volts across my first relay coil as well. So as I put more and more loads onto the circuit, then the source voltage is slowly dropping. We saw 14 and a half, now we're at 13 volts, okay? As long as it's well within the range of this guy, uh, so be careful because even if you tap these guys, then they will uh, turn on. Then, uh, so as long as you're with, well within the 12 volts for this guy, it should stay on as long as they don't tap it. Okay, so last one, we should see the voltage sitting across this final push button here. So now I'm at 13 volts. And when I press this guy, my third relay will turn on. Beautiful, I have six millivolts across my switch now. 35 when I let it go, so 35 millivolts. Now the voltage has transferred over to this relay coil. And now I'm at 12.37. So I'm really at the limits of this control transformer. If I had another relay and another light, the voltage would drop to the point where everything would turn on. So the other, the other green LED light is also at uh, 12 volts. And we did have that at one point uh, where the guys were, uh, were wiring these guys up and they went one, two, and when the third one turned on, then all of a sudden they would all turn off. That was because the control transformer behind was too small for this project board. So once we had the inrush, the sealed curtain, sealed current for both the lights and the first two relays, and then the inrush current for this guy and this guy, it was too much current for the VA for the transformer. The voltage started to sag and it's dipped below 12 volt and then all three relays would kick out. And we were watching uh, students, you know, struggle to it would turn everything off, right? They would rewire everything, and we we're like, "What is going on?" So when they, we left, we checked the, the VA for the transformer, did quick calculation, and we're like, "Oh my goodness, the transformer is too small for that particular project." We didn't tell them because that would be a mutiny. So we replaced the transformers. Next day, they came in, wired everything up, and they're like, "I don't know what changed, but now it magically works." Yeah. So. Um, Sequence of events is that nothing, nothing until the first trend, the first push button is pressed. Then the first relay turns on with an indicator light, right? Again, the voltage is now across the loads at 13.6. Our source voltage was 14 and a half. Then when we turn on the second one, so the third one will not turn on until the second relay and indicator turns on. That voltage is now dropped to uh, 13 volts across each of those volt, those loads, and all of our other loads have now dropped to 13 volts as well. Because the internal resistance of the secondary is dropping more voltage on the secondary of the transformer. Now we turn on our third lo load, third relay turns on, third indicator light turns on, we're at 12 volts with the limit for the VA for that control transformer behind. And we got 12 volts here as well. And we should have the 12 volts across each of the loads, right? There's 12.28, there's 
and each of these guys should have roughly the same 12.3, 12.3, and 12.3. So hopefully, um, with your patience and watching this video, we've been able to go through the components. You've seen how you can screw it up, like if you miss a wire, uh, or you, if you like, uh, miss wire something and it seems to work, uh, but in the end, this green light was not turning off, so I had to move some wires in order to make that work. And then the sequence of events is actually working, and then we have first one, second one, third one, and then the, uh, the normally closed for the first relay. When it turns off, then these ones would also turn off, but those the other two relays will also turn off as well. So hopefully this has helped you understand how to troubleshoot things, how to take a look at all the components, make sure they work. This relay was, was messed, so we had to mess with that to get her working. Um, so lots of, lots of like issues, but in the end, everything did work and we didn't have to rip everything down and rewire it. We just took a deep breath, checked our wiring, checked our voltages and worked through it. Okay, hopefully that helps guys. We'll see you guys on the next video.